Good evening, Vixens fans, and welcome to Vixens Live. My name's Pete Laser. a pleasure to be your host for Vixens Live tonight and each and every Thursday of the Suncorp Super Netball season. We come together to celebrate all things Vixens. 2020 has certainly been a strange year, but on behalf of Netball Victoria and the Melbourne Vixens, we'd like to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to stay safe and of course follow the government's stay at home regulations. It's a testing time for everyone, but there's never been a better time to work together by staying apart. Today's Vixens live show is proudly brought to you by Deakin University. Search Deakin Open Day and discover Deakin's progressive real world approach to learning. Deakin Virtual Open Day, a day that's all about tomorrow, Sunday, August 16, from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. The Vixens Live show is going to be proudly brought to you every Thursday night on Facebook throughout the Suncorp Super Netball season. And I'll have the privilege of being joined by a special co-host every week. It doesn't get much bigger or better than our co-host tonight. 118 tests for Australia, 47 games for the Vixens after 11 seasons with the Phoenix. Two-time gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games, two-time World Cup champion. The inaugural captain led us to a premiership. In fact, she even has the MVP named after her and now a Melbourne Vixens assistant coach. It is Sherelle McMahon. Sherelle, welcome. Thank you, Pete. Wow, that, uh, that was a nice introduction. Thanks for that. You've, maybe you've had a couple of practice of, of introducing me, I've got to say. I have over the course of time. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for tonight. No, it's, <laughs> I'm only joking. Look, it has been a, a bizarre year, 2020. Mm. We know that. You're as close to the team as anyone. How are the girls going? They've, they've relocated to the harbour, big thanks to the Queensland government and everyone involved. They've relocated up there. How are the girls going? Yeah, it's been tr just a really uh, unsettling time is probably a good way to describe it, in particularly in the lead up to the girls leaving to go up to the hub. I mean, we all know that. The experience that we're having all over Australia, and particularly here in Victoria, is that things are changing really rapidly. And that's what happened for the girls when they were heading up there. They had departure dates that were delayed and then cancelled and then a different venue that they had, a different state they were going to, but they've got themselves up there now. They're almost through their quarantine period and I think they found it a little bit challenging at times yep. uh, being just in the hotel. They're literally just in the hotel and only going um, out to their training sessions and coming back home again. So look, I think it's been tough in some ways, but they are in really good spirits. I was on a Zoom call. We're all used to those now. I was on a Zoom call with them yesterday and they all they look pretty good and just really excited about the season starting. And it is bittersweet for you as well. You love mm. to see them doing well, but of course you don't get to go mm. because of your beautiful young family. <laughs> so that's the sweet part. You've got a great family at home, but <laughs> it also means that you miss out going. How does that sit with you at the moment? Yeah, it's really tough actually. It was a really hard decision. I think, um, you know, I have spent so much time with the girls. We've been working really hard on, on changing a couple of things, tweaking a few things to, to give ourselves the best opportunity this year. And when it was announced that it was going to be an extended period of time away, it could be even as much as up to 14 weeks. I unfortunately, couldn't do that with my young family, particularly given the quarantine uh, that we had to do when we were crossing borders and the fact that we're in lockdown. And so support from a family perspective is a bit trickier for, for us at the moment. So yeah, that was the decision and, and I'm disappointed, but Die Honeys uh, jumped back into in with, the, in with the team and everyone knows her really well and she's a great coach. So they're in good hands. If anyone's going to keep them on the straight and narrow, it will be Die Honey. Don't worry about that now. The league announced the first six rounds of the season. Everything happening as of yesterday, everything's now happening in Queensland. It is an ever-changing beast. We're hosting five of the first six games as home games. Hopefully, towards the back end of the season, we can get them back into Melbourne. If not, we'll be supporting them with all our might from home. Who do you think is going to be challenging the Melbourne Vixens for those top colour spots on the ladder? Who will settle best and first? Yeah, well, it'll be an interesting one. Obviously, we, we kick off against the Magpies, and that is always a tough game, one that everyone always looks forward to seeing. But I think, you know, the, the Swifts have been a really consistent team, obviously, winning last year. They've lost a couple of players, uh, but the, I think that they'll really challenge again. And Lightning, once again, with that stability that they've seen in their players from last year to this year, I think... Uh, that they'll be really tough too. But we all know that it's hard to predict, Pete. You yeah. know, yeah, there's always a team or two that kind of pop up and you think, well, they just, they, they play so well. And, and what it will be this season is the team that copes with everything that's going on around the season the best. That'll be the team that really pushes forward. 
two things they need to cope with now is red time and mm. the Suncorp Super Shot. There's been plenty talked about. <laughs> we won't talk about it too much. It doesn't need to be until we actually have it going. But we're certainly in a good position for both those. Talk us through what you've been talking through at training and how we're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's um, we, we've been trialling that as much as we can in match the match simulation we've been able to do. And so, you know, I think initially it is a bit of trial and error. And the reality is we haven't spent a lot of time doing it. So this first game will come along and we'll give a few things a crack. And I think all the teams will probably evolve in how they use that particular super shot. And it might depend on the situation of the game as to how you approach it um, or, you know, the ability of your players. Now, we're lucky at the Vixens that we've got some really sharp shooters from that distance. And I've seen a couple of quarters played where um, Caitlin and... MJ in particular have been taking those long shots and nailing it and actually scoring MJ in particular have been taking those long shots and nailing it and actually scoring a huge chunk of shots in that last five minutes. So it could significantly change the look of, of a quarter in a game. Too well, they've got some fairly good coaching too and they've got Sherelle McMahon just letting them know how to do it from around the ring as well. Our members are our lifeblood. There's no doubt about that. We've had 1,246 members mm. who have pledged their membership this year, knowing the uncertainty of what's going on. That's amazing. How does it feel as a former player, but also still being involved passionately with the club? How mm. does that feel to know that level of support, plus everyone watching now at home and supporting on the mm. weekend? What does that mean to a, to a player and to a club? Oh, it means so much. And I've been lucky enough over this last couple of months to do some online stuff with members and engaging with them. And we've just got such brilliant members. And it's you cannot understate how important it is to the players who are out on court to still know that they're being supported by the fans. And I know that we would love to be doing that in stadium. At the moment, that's not going to be able to happen. But the support that they feel from, um, from the fans uh, with the way they're engaging with them is is still really, really important. And I'm crossing my fingers that maybe we'll see them. I don't know what that's going to look like, but, um, you know, that, that support is incredible, really. And we know that it's tough for people out there. So we really, really appreciate everyone still getting on board. Well, the Melbourne Vixens is all about the fans, the members and the supporters. And that's Vixens Live is all about as well. Throughout the year, the team, of course, they're in the hub at the moment. They're going to be sending some behind-the-scenes footage, just letting us know what's going on up there that we can't normally see. We're going to get to know them just a little bit more. To kick off the show, we're going to start with a new segment. It's going to be recurring every Thursday night on Vixens Live, and that's called Quick Fire, where we're going to ask our Vixens players 60 seconds worth of questions, and as quickly as we can, get through as many as we can to find out as much as we can about our Vixens players. To kick us off for the season, our first quick fire session is with someone who's come back to the Vixens after being a training partner in 2017, going to the New South Wales Swifts and returning this year. Let's do a little bit of quick fire and get to know a little bit more about Kate Eddy. Hey, Kate. I was going to get, let's get a coffee before trading starts. I've got some questions for you. Okay. All right, who was your netball idol growing up? Uh, Julie Holiday. What TV shows are you obsessed with at the moment? Gossip Girl. Ooh. How nervous do you get before matches on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, 7. Mm. Are you a texter? Uh, <laughs> are you a texter or a caller? Um, I can be both, but when I text, I go like, ding, 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 ding. I'll send you 500 <laughs> messages. <laughs> All right, during movies, do you cry or laugh the most? Uh, cry. What did you want to do when you were five years old? Uh, be a princess, probably. Yeah, cute. What's the most adventurous thing that you've ever done? Um, when I went to the Philippines, I got on a cargo ship because I didn't know how to get to an island, so I just jumped on a cargo ship. Oh, gosh. If you were in a reality TV show, what one would you be on? Uh, amazing Race. And if you could raid any woman's closet right now, who would it be? Blake Lively, do you want to come? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get that coffee. Woo!
Great to have the support of Deakin University. Great to have Quickfire and find out a little bit more about Kate Eddy. You've worked a little bit with Kate. How has she fitted in back into the Vixens lineup? Oh, very well. Yeah, she's come back in exceptionally well. She's a really fit athlete and a little bit deceptive in the way she moves around the court. So I love watching the work that she does. And she's just got a really, she's got a very uh, understated but really great sense of humour too. So I think she, she fits in really well. Fantastic. We look forward to plenty more quick fire segments throughout the course of the season. It brings us to a little bit more of a serious part of the show. We're going to preview our first round of the year and, of course, the upcoming match, which is on Sunday, 2nd of August from Nissan Arena, 5.30, the new time that we're playing on Sunday against our cross town rivals, the Magpies. Shaz, unfortunately, the big cross town rivalry can't be played at Melbourne Arena with a huge crowd. It will be played whilst both teams are still in quarantine, but it won't mean that the rivalry is any less fierce. And, of course, points still up for grabs. Absolutely. And, of course, the girls would love to be playing this in front of all, all of our fans, but uh, we'll all still be able to watch and support from back here. And, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great rivalry that has built up very, very quickly. And it's, it's real. The rivalry is real. <laughs> Absolutely it is. And no more so than last year with Collingwood, of course, or the Magpies getting both games during the home and away mm. season. But then that memory semi-final win at St. Nebel Hockey Centre, which was absolutely fantastic. That place was absolutely rocking and the Vixens getting the points there. It does show you can go either way and there's plenty on the table for both sides. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, that final game of the season that we played against the Magpies, they were playing for a spot in the final and, you know, many people thought that probably with the both of the team's forms that they wouldn't quite get there, but they just absolutely smashed it in that final game. And um, that was probably one of the most pleasing things about that semi-final, the bounce back from the girls and we were at the state netball center as you said and there's so many great memories of, of that stadium and it was really intimate it was such a great atmosphere it was really good and the girls came out firing from the start which is great now of course the magpies will look a little bit different this year uh, from what that team looks like but um, it'll still be an incredibly tough game Will indeed. What do you think the, the key is for the game? What are you looking forward to most? And talk us through some of the key matchups, perhaps, that if you've had a closer look at round one, which we all know <laughs> way too much focus goes on round one when there's 14 <laughs> rounds in the season. But we've been looking forward to it for so long. What are you looking forward to the most? Well, I'm looking forward to the girls just getting out there, to be yes. completely honest. I mean, there were certainly times where we wondered whether this season would even get off the ground. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I think, particularly for the Vixens and the Magpies, these are the teams, the only teams teams in this competition who will have to go through that 14-day quarantine period. So for me, I'll be really interested to see how both of the teams come out of that and, and hopefully they can switch on and engage really well. So from a Vixens perspective, what we've been talking to the girls about is just focusing largely on our game um, because, you know, if we can, can nail that, that's going to be the really important thing for, for us, particularly as we get going through this season. So that really short, sharp play, the variation in the play we want to be able to see uh, from the girls. So that's what we've been really talking to them about. But, um, you know, there, there's good matchups all over the court, although, as I mentioned, there's going to be a few different faces from the Magpies. And that can be challenging too when you're trying to scout forward for a game and you don't know uh, exactly how it's going to Look, we're not 100% sure about the Brown sisters and whether they'll be there, Maddie and Kelsey. So that makes it a bit tricky. Jeeva Mentor is always a big one. So Jeeva Mentor and whoever she lines up against in that uh, goal shooter position, that is a huge key for both of the teams. Whoever can get on top in that little matchup, I think will be uh, going really well. Which means shooting efficiency is just so important. Mm. Fwaiti shooting at 88% in the semi-final last year. Now we bring in the super shot, yes, but yeah. for a majority of the quarter, it's still about the fundamentals. How important is it going to be under the post, making sure that we are shooting as well as we can? Oh, definitely. I mean, shooting percentage, we all know that's really important. The goals all want to nail their shots, so we've been working really hard on that. Um, but you're right, and I think, you know, we've got to remember, although this super shot has been introduced, there's still 10 minutes of every quarter that is being played under the standard netball rules. So, you know, that ability to, to really do well in those first 10 minutes will be crucially important. So we'll just be looking at working that goal, that ball in. And and I think, and I touched on it before with the two-point shot, the, the approach that we're initially going to take at least is that we have the athletes and the players who often find themselves in that two-point zone 
anyway. It's a natural part of our game. We don't have that big, tall holding shooter necessarily where all the shots are being taken under the post. So our approach initially will be to largely play our natural game, regardless of what stage of the quarter we're in. Um, and then if we need to play ourselves into the two-point zone, we want, we've, we've got the ability to do that. But I think initially uh, what we want to see from them is just really getting comfortable with their own natural gameplay. Well, I'll tell you what, we always talk about, well, it's certainly talked about from defenders who say that they win the premierships <laughs> yes. and their forwards, <laughs> the shooters always get the glory. Yeah. I'll tell you what, who, doesn't, who don't get enough of a mention, that's our wonderful mid-quarters. In fact, in the team of the year last year, the Vixens had four of the starting seven, mm. all three starting mid-quarters. Two of those starting mid-quarters have been named co-captains of the Melbourne Vixens. And as they're currently locked down in Queensland, they've just had a bit of a training session. It is a very warm welcome to the Melbourne Vixens 2020 co-captains, Liz Watson and Kate Maloney. Welcome to Kate. Welcome to Liz. Congratulations, both of you on being co-captains. Firstly, to you, Liz, what does it mean to be named co-captain of the Melbourne Vixens? Hello guys, how are you all going back home? Um, it has been a really nice honour, I guess. Um, I've played with Kate pretty much my whole netball journey, so it's nice to share this role and with the inclusion of Emily as well. We've got a really nice dynamic and um, we've been working quite well together in the, in the first 10 days of quarantine. <laughs> and Kate, you've got your sidekick right next to you as co-captain. You're sharing the captaincy of a couple of seasons in now, you're an experienced leader, but to get a little bit of support as well, must be fantastic to have Liz by your side as co-captains of the Vixens. Yeah, sure is. I'm super proud of her. I think it, I've said it a few times, it wasn't really a matter of if she took over that role, but it was when she did. And I think we've watched Lizzie over the last few years just um, absolutely dominate on and off the court. And so super excited to work with Liz and also Em. Um, and as Lizzie said, uh, hopefully we can create a really cool little leadership group that provides so many different things and support each other throughout the year. That is one of the great things about this team, girls, is that there's leadership all over the court. Um, but I'm really interested to see uh, and know how you guys are feeling going into round one. Everyone listening back home is thinking, how are the girls feeling? They've been in quarantine. Are you feeling like you normally would coming into a game? Or is there, I don't know, is there a bit of a different feel given the circumstances over the last 14 days? Um, it, it definitely is different. You know, we've never ever prepared for round one this way, but um, we had a little practice match amongst ourselves just before at training and everyone's feeling really good. And I think having the 14 players here, we're able to do that. Everyone is just excited to play. It's been the longest pre-season of our lives. So I think we're all ready just to play. No matter who we were playing, we just wanted to get out there and have a good game. So the feeling's really positive. Everyone's um, loves going to train because we actually get to leave the hotel. So we've never wanted to train as much as we have this period of time. So everyone's in really good spirits for the weekend. Yeah, that's good. And obviously with the uh, quarantine period that you've got, you're spending a lot more time together than you are normally used to. Who's been the most annoying? Let's be honest, because I'm sure there's been a little bit of that. How, how have you all gone with it? That's a good question and we could take you for a tour around our little room. As Lizzie said, getting out for training is like the most exciting thing because otherwise we are stuck in our room. Um, who's been the most annoying? KD loves to come. She's not yeah. annoying, but she's um, she loves to come for a visit. So Lizzie and I are rooming and she's one yeah. of the ones that's always here. But our door is open. We love having the girls pop over um, for a coffee or a cup of tea, a bit of a snack. But... <laughs> Um, no, no one's been annoying. No, you? there's lots of TikToks and dancing going around, which mm. isn't really my thing. So, um, yeah, I think <laughs> it's more they just walk up and down the hallways to get their steps up. It would be great to take you on a tour and show you all the different rooms because I'm sure you're well aware Joe and Emily's room is like the TikTok room. Um, everyone provides something different. <laughs> there's no surprise that you two are rooming together. Who else is rooming together to make sure that the combinations are <laughs> yeah. just perfect? Uh, we've got what, Joe and Emma together. Um, Tegan and Katie are together. They've got a nice, probably a bit more quiet room, <laughs> which is very clean. Of, yeah, very clean. But everyone's got their little buddy. But yeah, we're able to go into each other's rooms, um, four of us at a time. Four so a time. we do sort of rotate through and, and go visit each other. It's so interesting because you, you don't really realise those sort of little details. You're not allowed to go in to each other's rooms all at once. You're still not able to eat meals together as you normally would when you're away. 
Can you give us a little bit more insight into how, what that's like, but also what it's going to be when you get to game day? Game day is going to be very different from you. Even on the bench, you'll be sitting 1.5 metres away from each other. I'm not sure how Simone's going to go with that, talking to Di on the bench. But talk to us about some of those little changes that maybe we don't realise when we're not in your situation. Yeah, look, it all is very different, but I suppose what isn't different this year, to be mm. honest. Um, little things like at the start, we weren't even allowed out on the balcony, so we were pretty much stuck in mm. our apartment. We are now allowed out on the balcony, which is great. As you said, Chaz, we can't have team dinners together. It's all done on like the square meterage as to how many people we can have in each room. Um, I'm Actually, the fact that you brought up the bench, that was probably the thing at oh our training God. session today was working out where everyone was going to sit and how it was going to work because there will be two rows. So that will be slightly different. And I think the biggest difference for us is that we're not going to be at Melbourne Arena with our Melbourne Vixens fans there. And um, we know that everyone in Victoria is doing it tough right now. And um, we are sending our love back home to everyone. And I'm super grateful to be here in Queensland and to be able to play against the Magpies, which we love playing against the Magpies, that rivalry that we do have. But um, it's going to be quiet in the stadium without our fans there. And we're going to have to create a lot of that energy for ourselves. Is that something that you speak about going into a huge rivalry round against Collingwood, knowing that you've got 14 games ahead of you and then hopefully some finals as well, which is a long way away, but going into round one, just making sure you can control what you can control and, and make sure that you're ready for whatever eventuates on Sunday afternoon? Yeah, I think we're just excited to actually get out on court because once we're on court, there's none of these other rules. We can just kind of just play. So um, that's probably going to be the most exciting thing. But I think, yes, we do have that rivalry with the Magpies and we always have. But I think, you know, any round one, in, and I guess this circumstance as well, like I said, it's probably been about eight months since our last game. So I think whoever it was, we're going to still be quite tough and it's going to be a challenging game. And it always is. So we're quite lucky that we are the last game of the round so I think we're all excited to sit down on Saturday afternoon and, and watch the other teams and see how it all plays out especially with the new rule changes. Probably important not to play the game before you get there either. <laughs> 5.30 Sunday afternoon we'll all be tuning into Telstra TV. Just one last one before we let you go. We know the coveted coaches award is always up for grabs. Has there been anyone <laughs> putting their hand up in the harbour, in the training sessions, just to make sure that it's not a Mannix and Maloney uh, award once again? Liz, probably more a question for you. Has anyone else uh, just sort of rubbed off on the coach to make sure they're getting ahead in the most important award of the year? I think Mannix has put her foot say. forward. Oh, she no. Taking out temperatures, handing out the sanitised whites before we get on the bus. She's all over it. So she, um, yeah, she's always got Simone laughing. I think they've got a little connection that no one else has. I so couldn't agree more. I, I think, think it's, it's going, it, Mannix has already got it. She yeah. is like in charge of the cleaning <laughs> Sorry, lights, locked in. the temperatures. Um, <laughs> we and have no hope. I think no she hope. goes over there for a cup of tea and Just a bit of chocolate every night, now. actually. Hand it over. <laughs> We're only a couple of seasons away from renaming the award, the Emily Mannix <laughs> Award, I think. Uh, girls, make sure you know just how much all of us, all our Melbourne Vixens fans, members, supporters, everyone from down here in Melbourne, know how much we're supporting you from afar. Unfortunately, as you say, we can't be in the stands, but know that we are genuinely cheering you on with all of our hearts and we look forward to seeing some amazing on-court performances. We know how much you've sacrificed, we know how hard it's been. So know that we're supporting you and you've got all of us behind you as we head into season 2020. Thanks, guys. Can't wait. Thanks, Go get them, Great to have them. Go get them. We look Bye. forward to watching 5.30 on Sunday from Nissan Arena. They look like they're in good spirits at the moment. There's a, a little element of what else can you do at the moment? Like we, we know how hard it would be on them to sacrifice yes. plenty to get to get up there. How good is it to see that they are up and about at the moment and, and smiling away, as those two usually do in each yeah, other's company? Yeah, they do. They do. They like each other's company, that for, that's for sure. And, you know, I think that the Vixens are lucky that they've got leaders like that who, you know, kind of take an approach of, you know, what will be will be. Let's get on and take this challenge as much as we can. And you're right, it's it's tough because they're, they're away from all the comforts that they have at home. And so we can all imagine how tough that is. But I genuinely thinks that there's a real excitement about it finally getting here and I think you can hear that in their voices. They're going to be as fit as they've ever been, it's going <laughs> to be true. ready to go, don't worry about that. Time for another one of our light-hearted segments here on Vixens Live. We saw earlier there's a few characters in this playing group, Shaz, we love them and of course the newly appointed vice-captain for season 2020 is indeed 
Emily Mannix. Now, here, before we go to a little video about her, I hear Shaz that she's a bit of a team joker. We already know that she's an absolute <laughs> favourite of the coach, and anyone who can make Simone McInnes laugh is going very, very well. But we do hear that she's a bit of a joke in the team. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. She's a bit of a joke. So, actually, when uh, I was travelling with the team last year, we would kind of sit quite next to each other on the bus and have some laughs with each other. She's got a really fun sense of humour. But don't forget, she actually won the MVP last year, too. So, it's not just all the jokes about him. Sorry, she won the... The... Uh... Sherelle McMahon medal, indeed. <laughs> Look, if it's named after you, you may as well go with it. <laughs> she is the reigning Sherelle McMahon medal. She plays her 50th match this weekend. Earlier in the week, our team was able to sit down with Em and learn some key facts about her that make her tick. Let's have a look. Uh, the snowman? Uh, Ola? Oh, oh, Ola? No, it's not Ola. Olaf! Olaf! I'm really good at doing the dishes. <laughs> um, oh, that's hard. That's supposed to be quick, isn't it? Um, I would. I don't even know. That's terrible. Buy. I could probably buy two tubs of connoisseur ice cream if they're on special at Coles or Safeway. Depends. Usually they're ten dollars for one, so. Probably one. <laughs> um, drive nearly two hours to a match. <laughs> Fun. Oh, I've done this before and I've said someone that I'm not going to say. Um, celebrity crush at the moment. Oh, I know. Been watching Mad Men, Don Draper, who's played by John Hamm. Oh, him in a suit is very good. <laughs> Great to see a different side of Emily, but there's plenty of tough, hard work that's gone into her journey so far. And of course, that has been rewarded with the vice captaincy in 2020 for the Melbourne Vixens. This week, we also saw an episode of the league's Our Stories series, where our very own Marwick Wenda, and we got to see just what she's made of. MJ growing up on the dirt courts of Malawi, playing shoeless with balls made of melted plastic bags and string, goalposts constructed from tree trunks and old tyres attached as rings. It is a truly amazing story. Let's take a look at MJ's journey. I was born in north of Malawi, so this is my village. And I started playing netball when I was 11 years old and I used to walk to go to school like two hours to play netball there. Netball in Malawi uh, is a little bit different because we're still like very slow. In the villages, they use like different ball. I use like plastic bags, so we mud it by fire. That's how I used to pray. And this is a goal post I used when I was praying in my village. The, the link we make from the tire. So we make something from the tire, from the car. I didn't wear shoes. I was just praying like barefooted. So it was different for us. Like, I didn't know that there's like this wow. Welcome back, Maui Kumwenda. She's a crowd favorite, isn't she? Kumwenda steps in, lays it up, finds the middle. Our head coach at the time, Maxine Walkup, said to us, you've got to get this girl. She is just dynamic. I think she's exactly what we're looking for. And so we started on our journey of trying to see how we could bring MJ out to Australia. My mom, she's the one who encouraged me when I was like, oh, I'm going to Australia. So she said to me, like, oh, go. But I was a little bit nervous. I was like, how can I go there? I went and picked up MJ from the airport <laughs> and bought her a little toy koala. It was great to see her, but I knew she was apprehensive and, and nervous because it was the unknown. And driving down the, the freeway, I could just see her looking at all the cars and explaining that there was nothing like this back home. Yeah, people speak fast. <laughs> so I was very shy to speak to people. 
and the food is different like and weather this was my first time to see this weather I'm like home is always hot and when you feel cold it's 25 degrees we had a bond I think instantly even though we couldn't speak the language well, when we lived together in this house we used to pull up the driveway and we always said home sweet home <laughs> <laughs> as um as we pulled up my birthday last year mj came to my surprise birthday and gave me this card which says happy birthday mum and inside it says happy birthday shelly thank you so much for all that you have done in my life from the time you helped me from Malawi to come to Australia. I appreciate what I am today. It's all because of you. I can't forget the surprise you organised for me, for my mum to come to Australia. I believe one day you will visit me in Malawi. This is my dream. Costa sent me regard to your birthday too. Happy birthday once again, mum. Love. When I went to watch the Vixens in 2012, I was very excited to see the game because it was on TV and you can see like these super superstars Nate bro. I was eating chips and talking to my old coach that one day I will play on this team. And there's the Kumbunda Jack. That lady there has just added a pillar of strength to the Melbourne Vixens. After each season, I always go back home and visit my mom in the village. And I also go to other schools because the money I get from netball, I also help some of the school fees in Malawi because I don't want someone like some of the girls like to stop and getting married because we can't find a school fees. There's another world. It's not. In the village, there's also bright future for you guys. Thanks to our merchandise partner, Puma. You can enjoy supporting the Vixens at home this season with our latest merchandise range. Grab yours at melbournevixens.com.au Get behind us and become a Vixens member. Beyond the Court memberships are just $55. Receive exclusive member benefits including supporter pack, member only content and 10% off all Vixens merchandise. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Stay up to date with all the netball news by following the Melbourne Vixens on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and use the hashtag Vixens for Life. Well, what a story MJ's is, but it does bring us to game day and what we're looking forward to. And after the show, a bit of a survey on what you think our starting seven will be for Sunday 5.30, round one against the Magpies. We thought we'd go into Sanctum and get Sherelle's view of what your starting seven will be. A couple of options for our survey later on. Do we go with Max Weston, Eddie Maloney, Watson, Philip Thwaite as option one? Option two, we'll just change the shooter and have MJ starting at shooter and Thwaitsy possibly waiting for the last five minutes, the red time. Or option three, Katie Ann coming in to goalkeeper and Lee Mannix moving out to goal defence and Joe Weston taking the wing defence position. There are three for the survey post-show. Of those three combinations, which ones do you think Simone and the coaching staff will start with? Well, I don't have the inside word as yet. I haven't had that discussion with the coaches. Uh, but I'm, I'm probably going to lean towards one. Number one, um, that would be really just the starting lineup um, from last year's semi-finals, uh, except with Kate Eddy, of course, taking that uh, wing defence position. So that's what I would be leaning towards. But don't forget, 
there's rolling subs this year. That's another one of the changes that we're going to be seeing this season. So I would suggest that there will be some movement through that and I would have no hesitation in putting any of the players out there. We just saw that um, package on Maui Kamwenda and she is in a seriously good frame of mind, both obviously uh, mentally, but physically she's in a really good spot too. So she'll be out there starting, at some point. Starting sevens we always love. We talk about it quite a bit. Who's going to start? Who they're going to be matching up yeah. on? How important, especially with a condensed season, if you're playing Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, yeah. how important not only will the substitutions be, but everyone ready to go and knowing their role when they get on court? Oh, yeah, so important. Never been more important. And with those rolling subs, you, you absolutely have to be ready. There's no pause in the game. You, you can just run straight on there. And one of the good things this season is that um, some of our training partners, and a big shout out to them too, they do an incredible amount of work. Um, and for Four of them have gone up with the Vixens into the quarantine period and then into the hub and there'll be 12 that are allowed on the bench so there'll be an extended bench that what we're used to seeing uh, so they'll have to be ready too and I, I I'd seriously think that they'll all be used because you're right the the mode and the player welfare across this season is going to be one of the keys you'll be watching passionately no doubt when does your feedback get thrown into the mix as well <laughs> I mean everyone's got an opinion we know that but when does when do Simone and Diane, everyone will be just bouncing off you. When, when does a bit of a, a take on that come about? Well, good question. We were talking about that just yesterday, exactly how that's going to, to look. And it might evolve because obviously, you know, we've never done it like this before yeah. from, uh, from a distance. So my role will be having a bit of a look forward um, to what's coming next week as well. So keeping an eye on our opposition for the following week and giving some feedback on that. So um, there'll be a bit of that. But I'll, I'll certainly be in touch with uh, Simone and Di and the players as I need to be. But, you know, there's not going to be a lot of time when we get to those games where we're weekend, midweek, weekend. There's, there's not a lot of time. So we'll just, it's a bit of wait and see. And you mentioned it earlier. It's about staying with <laughs> our game and making sure we're playing our way. I think if it's going to be a condensed season without mm. too, many time, too much time in between games, that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, we mentioned earlier on that our members and supporters who unfortunately can't attend round one or round one to round six if you're Victorian and Melbourne-based, but we did ask if they could send through some of the messages of support, and we also want you to send through more messages of support that we can send up to our girls as well. But a few of them have come through, and we'd like to take a look at some of our member supporter messages now. The first one is a video from Beck Berkey. Hi, Melbourne Vixens. I hope you guys are all doing super well during this horrible time. You guys all seem so supportive, happy, genuine and kind, and I hope that when you come back to Victoria, the cases will go down. Um, hope you smash the magpies and go Vixens. Thanks very much, Beck. Great little video. Love all the little gifts of players <laughs> on the top too. They're really cool. I like those indeed. Very cool. Cheryl Harris has sent one through as well saying, good luck Sunday. It's the Derby girls. We need bragging rights. Very true, Cheryl. Imogen Brooks has sent out, go out on court and smash it like you guys always do. Look forward to seeing that, Imogen. Uh, Heidi Ad 13, I can't wait. Go show everyone why the Vixens will be the team to beat. Good luck. Tia Shaw, regardless of where you are in Australia, 2020 is still the year of the Vixens. <laughs> go get them. Eliza Knox says, come on, Vixens, show the comp and Australia. Nothing can stop or slow the Vixens. Do it for Melbourne. It'll be probably that little jab that we need, a bit of energy in there. Neats 44, we are beside you all the way. We may be watching on TV, but if you listen, you'll hear us cheer. Go Vix. That's probably true if home games or anything to go by. Larsie Morgan says, you are amazing. You can do whatever you put your mind to. Come on, Vixens, bring home that trophy. Thanks, Lazi. Ellie to fly says, to all the ladies that have navigated the longest pre-season of all time, I just wanted to say that we, the netball community, are so excited to see you out on court. Never a true word, word spoken there. Salonista123 says, can't wait for you to cheer on from Melbourne. You will do us proud and bring your best for all community sport that is stalled at the moment. Play for yourselves mm -hmm. and for your hometown. Kyra D18 says, go girls. Smash it and show that being in a different state doesn't change a single thing. Let's hope you're right, Kara. And Jess Lee has given us this video of support as well. Hey Melbourne Vixens girls, Jess here. I just thought I'd send you a quick little message wishing you all the best in your round one clash against the Magpies this weekend. Um, it's been a very long pre-season and I miss watching the netball so much and can't wait for this weekend. Go Vixens! Hey Mel 
super messages of support. Geez, our fans are good. I, I genuinely <laughs> love them. I know I've not missed one home game of the Melbourne Vixens since we started. This will be the first one on Sunday. I know how good the supporters are. They Is that are, real? Like, Have you not missed a game? Thanks for noticing, Shaz. You didn't even, <laughs> you didn't even know we went to school together, and now you don't even know that I'm there every week. I haven't missed a game. Why would I? Yeah, well, that's exactly right. The supporters are everything. That's what <laughs> makes the Melbourne Vixens the club, isn't it? Yeah, it absolutely is. And, and, you know, we heard the girls talking about the energy that they'll have to create because there is absolutely no doubt that when you're in a home stadium, and particularly with the Melbourne Vixens fans behind you, it gives you something extra. The girls feed off that and they can feel the energy in the stadium. So they'll, they'll feel it, but they'll have to find a way to get around it and they've been working on being able to do that of course but you know just seeing some of those little quotes and yeah. messages of support thanks for that the girls absolutely read them and they love them so keep sending them in uh, because as this season goes on um, you know as we say the six weeks at the moment could be longer that they're away those little messages from home will just give them a little bit of a boost and no one knows answering fan mail more than our friend Sherelle McMahon before we head off tonight of course I'd like to remind everyone that even though the season is a little bit different this year. Your support is just as important, if not more important than ever. Get behind the team and become a Vixens Beyond the Court member. It's only $55. By being a member, you'll get exclusive member benefits, 10% off all merchandise, as well as making sure that the team can take to the court each and every week. If you're already a member and haven't pledged your membership yet, your support to the club is vital. So please join the 1,246 members that have pledged their support already and become a Vixens member and pledge your support for season 2020. Shaz, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed yourself. It was very, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. And it was nice seeing the girls uh, up there in Hubland, oh, sunny just, Queensland. <laughs> now we just want to see a little bit of netball, don't we? We, we just do. want to see them take the court. We do, yes. And we wish them all the best. It's been a blast having you. Of course, we are going to be here each and every Thursday, uh, live on Facebook, 7 p.m. So make sure you tune into Vixens Live each and every Thursday. Huge thank you to our Match Day partner and sponsor for tonight, Deakin University. Search Deakin Open Day and discover Deakin's progressive real-world approach to learning. Deakin Virtual Open, Open Day. It's a day that's all about tomorrow, Sunday, August 16, from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Don't forget to tune in to our Round 1 match. It is on Sunday at 5 5.30 now from Nissan Arena. It's a Netball Live app or Telstra TV. I tell you what, it's going to be better than just two and a half stars. Don't worry about that. We'll be here same time next week from 7pm. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay home, stay safe and go the Vixens. So we need to look out for them. We want kids to focus on the netball, not the odds when they watch the game. Get on board at lovethegame.vic.gov.au.